Here we have an example that asks how many generations will it take so the following geometric sequence will reach or exceed 6,000. To solve a problem like this, first we need to write the explicit function. We already know what P0 is, but we need to solve for R, our common ratio. And R can be solved by taking the next term and dividing it by the previous term. And it doesn't matter which two terms you grab from the sequence. I can take the first two. I can take the last two. Um, if I take the last two, we would say that the next term is 1 9th. And it's being divided by the previous term, which is 1 over 27. And we know that when we divide by a fraction, it is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we can say that r is 27 over 9 or that r is 3. And you can check this if you want. You can take um, a different pair of numbers and see that you'll get the same thing. If you were to take 1 over 243 and divide by 1 over 729, you will get 3 again. And I'll leave that for you to explore. So now we can write our explicit function. And the question is asking, how many generations will it take so that we reach or exceed 6,000? So we're going to replace Pn with 6,000. Now our goal is to isolate the n. So we want to isolate 3 to the n. And that means get rid of this 1 over 729. If I multiply both sides of the equation by 729 over 1, we see that fractions when multiplied by the reciprocals give us 1. And we're left just with 3 to the n on the right hand side. But we need to multiply this together. 729 times 6,000. And we get 4374000 equals 3 to the n. So I want to check that I copied that right. So now our exponent is where our variable lies. And to get that out, we need to use logarithms. And the logarithm has to have a base that matches the exponential base. So we're going to take log base 3 of 3 to the n to extract the n variable. But anything you do to one side of an equation, you need to do to both sides. So we're going to take log base 3 of this 4,374,000. Now, the right-hand side we know is going to cancel and leave us with just n. but we still have to evaluate the other side of the equation. And to do this, we use something called the change of base formula. So n is equal to ln of 4,374,000 divided by ln of 3. The change of base formula says you can take a log of any base and take the argument, that's what's inside the parentheses. So I took natural log of 4,374,000, and that goes in the numerator. And then you take the log of the same base, ln has to match top and bottom, and we put the base of the log, and we get ln of 3. So we want to evaluate this now. We go to our calculator ln 4,374,000, close the parentheses, divided by ln of 3. And when we hit enter, we get that n is equal to 13.91864. Once we pass a number, 
So once we pass 13.0, then n is considered the next generation. That means it would take 14 generations to meet or exceed 6,000. If I plug in 13.91864 and all of the decimals exactly, I should get a number very close to exactly 6,000. But when we speak in terms of generation, there's the first generation, second generation. Once you pass the whole number, you go to the next generation. It's kind of like how we do with years. Once we get to the year 2001, it's the 21st century. So we can plug this back in to our model to see that we meet or exceed 6,000. So again, here's our model. If we evaluate P of 14, that would be 3 to the 14th power over 729. We see we get 6561. So we meet or we exceeded 6,000. And in this case, we exceeded. If you were to plug in 13, So I changed a 14 exponent to a 13. You see we have 2,183. So once we multiply by 3 again, we get that 14th generation. We get that 6,561. And someplace in between the 13th and 14th generation, it'll be exactly 6,000. So there's your example using logarithms with geometric sequences. I hope this helps.